There's one group of people you do not want to piss off when you are the console maker, and that is hackers. But that's exactly what the Switch 2 has done, and I'm gonna explain why. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Anton, a power engineer, industrial mechanic, and a Red Seal electrician. We cover all kinds of products and topics in an approachable way for the average everyday person. I'm glad you found us. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. In a previous video, we already covered all the reasons why you should skip the Switch 2 and don't worry about buying one. But most of the reasons that we explained in that video was the anti-consumer tactics of Nintendo. Now, all throughout history, every time a manufacturer has taken an anti-consumer approach, the hackers have stepped up to give us something that we should have had all along. Yes, we can go back to the iPhone, Geohot, hacking it to use on his own cellular network because he didn't want to get locked down to the default carrier. That was the birth of the jailbreak. Then there was Geohot and the PlayStation. When they took away Linux from us and said, you can't have this anymore, well, he put it back there for us. And the list goes on and on. This is not a Geohot love letter. This is just the reality that when you take something away, people get upset. And what have they taken away from us? Well, number one, they charged us a lot of money for this console, and then they've made it so that the games are just game keys, they've increased the prices on the games, they've also asked you to pay a monthly fee to be able to unlock all of the features of the console. Effectively making it so that the purchase of the console just opens the door to an entire world of pay for service for the rest of your life. Now my prediction was that the console will be hacked very, very quickly, but when I was making that video, the hack came out. It came out too fast. In fact, it was a day one exploit. We're gonna cover that, but we're also gonna cover a few other things in this video. And to start off with the Switch news, some really exciting information has surfaced, and that is that a certain number of Switch 2 units were actually shipped with a factory debug software still active on the unit. Now the great news is these units have actually made it into the hands of security experts who are actively investigating what they can do with this debug firmware and what kind of secrets are unlocked inside. Now it's not gonna be as easy as we thought because the Switch actually has some pretty good security measures. Yes, it turns out that anytime you start to employ typical hacking tricks, the Switch detects these changes in voltage in temperature and peaking and poking and prodding and it actually locks itself out. Yes, Nintendo has already enacted their right to brick your software and a number of security researchers have already had their Switch 2 completely bricked at the hands of Nintendo because they were doing something that Nintendo didn't think they should be doing. Now, I know you guys are saying, well, they shouldn't be trying to gain access to the Switch and therefore it's Nintendo's right to block them out. And you know, I'm, I'm with you. I, I understand what you're saying, but where's the fun? I mean, half of the fun was going in and trying to see what made things work. I know myself, I really am fascinated with understanding how the technology works. And I've done the same thing with my Switch version one. Now it's been unlocked, not because I'm so smart and know how to hack things, but because I enjoy seeing the process and I've read through the documentation, all that stuff, and I love to understand it, even if it's just from a simpler side after the real smart people have done all the heavy lifting. If we go back to that debug firmware, we know if we start poking and prodding on that switch that it's actually gonna crash and lock us out. We will lose access to that device. That's where some sort of a gateway or entry point will become very critical for us so that we can get in without the system locking down. You see, we don't want to lose access to the debug firmware because there's gonna be lots more development made on that system, especially if we can reverse engineer it faster. And that's where the first user mode exploit comes out. And this is from security researcher by the name of David Buchanan, AKA Retroid. Now, he has shown proof of concept 
of a Switch version 2 that is running a user mode exploit. And you can see it in action here. Now he stresses that this is not a native exploit, but a user land exploit. What that means is user mode is a special sandbox. It is created by the developers of the console to restrict you down to a specific set of rules and guidelines and expectations that you must adhere to and or cause the system to crash out. We don't have access to all of the libraries that you would with a kernel exploit. That's where you have full system access, where you can tell it what you want to do and it will respond appropriately. It's very common for us to get a user mode exploit before we get a kernel exploit, and that is good enough to get the information needed to further unlock the system with an actual hardware exploit that gives you full access to that system but we're not there yet. Now, to help provide proof that this is not fake and that he hasn't faked this in any way, Retroid has given us a name, NN Compat Trampoline. Now he implies that knowing this name proves that he has seen the libraries that are built within that user land, so that sandbox. This is one call string that is accessible within that user land and nobody would know that unless they've seen it. Now, right now, I haven't seen it and most of you haven't seen it, so we don't, he could be making it all up. But as time goes on, I'm sure that it will be proven that this is legit and it will further enhance from there. This exploit coupled with the debug firmware could be a really exciting time for the Switch. Now, something else that's really exciting is the guys over at MigFlash. Now, they've got stuff like this, which is the Switch dumper, and they have the Switch flashcard, which allows you to load Switch One games onto your Switch and play it on this special card. These have been out for a while now, but the number one question everyone's asking is, what happens if I use the Switch flashcard on my Switch version two? And there were initial reports saying that it would automatically brick your console. It turns out that's not strictly true. There are many examples of users online who are showing themselves using their MIG switch on their Switch version 2, which at least shows the game in the home screen. But when they go to launch the game, it comes up with an error that says, we can't read the contents of this cart. Now this is a minor setback. The guys at MIGFLASH say that the MIGFLASH has actually supported on the Switch 2. Now this could be a play on words because you can insert the device and you can see the game. You just can't load it. But a quick look at the MigFlash website says right at the bottom where you say buy it now, MigFlash version two compatible with Switch 2 featuring a button on the top, simply plug in and play. Now that does not work right now. Do not buy a MigFlash thinking that you are going to go and copy Switch 1 games and play them on your Switch 2 but it could mean that they have a patch already ready that they're just testing and will be released soon because the MIG Flash is a fully upgradable system that allows you to flash new firmwares. And this was typical, it was fully expected. What wasn't expected was Nintendo to allow the, the games on the card to actually even show up on the screen. I'm shocked that they even get that far without any changes. They certainly have mig flashes to test and they certainly have gone through figured out how it works and built in safeguards i can't imagine that it is easy as a simple update to the card and then it's going to work again but the folks at mig flash say that it is that easy and they have not lied to us yet so despite the fact that they're crazy russians they might actually have something going on here so for a quick recap of where we're at hacks are coming mig flash is coming and Nintendo's about to take a big L because of their crazy anti-consumer tactics. And we are about to witness the fall of a console before it even gets off the ground. But I could be wrong. So I want to hear your guys' opinion on it. Feel free to post in the comments down below what you think about all this Switch 2 excitement. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. 
you can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.